Good day everyone, I am Kate Lorraine P. Kanumai and today I will be showing to you my return demonstration in performing the administration of parenteral medication. So parenteral administration refers to any method of administration other than the oral needs. However, it is most commonly associated with injecting straight into the body by passing the skin and the mucous membranes. So we have the intradermal route with an angle of 10 to 15 degrees subcutaneous route with an angle of 45 degrees, and intramuscular route with an angle of 90 degrees. So basically, there are four routes, but we will be going to perform and demonstrate the first three routes only. So now, in performing the medication administration, it is important to remember to observe and perform the 10 rights of medication administration to ensure patient safety and for us to give the appropriate care that the client deserves. Okay, so now let's go for the general preparation for the three routes since the general preparation in the progress report is just the same. So I will be performing and demonstrating it as one. So for the general preparation of the three routes, first and foremost, is we'll be checking the doctor's order and we will be checking the MAR or what we call the medication administration record for us to know what medication is to be given to the patient. So therefore, we will be um, going to determine what is the drug, the name of the drug, the dosage, the route, and the time it is to be given to the patient. Okay? After that, we're going to check the labels of each medication carefully against the MAR for us to ensure that the correct medication is being prepared and of course for us to avoid any medical errors. Okay, so always remember that we must follow the key checks in administering medication. So, read the label of the medication first if it is taken from the medication card, second, before withdrawal of the medication, and third, after withdrawal of the medication. So this is to ensure that we are giving the right medication and dosage for our client. Okay, and now we're going to organize all of our equipments to conserve time and energy. So I have here a tuberculin syringe, which will be used for the intradermal route, the insulin syringe, which will be used for the subcutaneous route, the 5cc gauge 23 syringe, which will be used for the intramuscular wrap. I also have here sterile water, which will serve as our medication in today's demonstration. An ampule, this is an improvised one. Cotton balls soaked with 70% alcohol and dry cotton balls. Hypodermic tray and forceps, gloves, alcohol. And lastly, I have here two receptacles. Okay, so now after organizing, I am going to perform proper hand hygiene and observe other appropriate infection pre prevention procedures to deter the spread of pathogenic microorganisms. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to do is the preparation of medication. So we will perform first the administration of medication from a vial and intradermal administration. Intradermal injection is the introduction of solution by means of syringe and needle into the superficial layers of the skin. So now I'm going to prepare the medication from a vial for drug withdrawal by mixing the solution. So if necessary, we're going to rotate the vial between the palms of our hand, not by mixing. So this is done since some vials contain a clay suspension which settles when they stand. And also, shaking is contraindicated because it may cause the mixture to foam. Okay, and after that, we're going to remove 
the protective cup or clean the rubber cup of a previously opened vial using an antiseptic swab in a circular motion. So this will reduce the number of microorganisms. And then discard. So now we're going to withdraw the medication by attaching the filter needle to draw up a pre-mixed liquid medication from a multi-dose vial and ensuring that the needle is firmly attached to the syringe. So this is done to prevent any um, solid particles to be drawn into the needle. So I'm going to unpack the needle that I have here or the syringe that I have here. So I have a tuberculin syringe which is ideal for skin testing or any intradermal injection. And also, the syringe that I have comes with a needle. So I'm going to remove it and replace it with the aspirating needle. Okay, so I'm holding the outer layer of the package to maintain its sterility. Okay, and I'm going to remove the needle and place it right here. And I'm going to unpack the aspirating needle. And I'm going to attach the syringe. And then, throw this in the proper receptacle. Now, remove the cup of the needle and then drop into the syringe the amount of air equals to the volume of the medication to be withdrawn. Okay, so this is done so that we can easily get the exact or right amount of medication. So for instance, we'll be needing 0.5 cc per ml. Okay. And after that, we're going to inject the needle into the upright vial through the center of the rubber cup while maintaining the sterility of the needle. So this is to prevent any contamination. Okay, and after that, inject the air into the vial while keeping the bevel of the needle above the surface of the medication. So this is done since the air will keep the medication to be drawn out easily since negative pressure will not be created inside the um, vial. Okay, and after that, we're going to withdraw the prescribed amount of medication, okay, by holding the vial down with its base, lower than its top, and move its syringe so that it is below the level of the fluid, okay? Okay, and then withdraw the medication, and then invert the vial, ensuring that the tip of the needle is below fluid level and then withdraw or gradually withdraw the medication. Okay, so this is to ensure that there are no bubbles that will be drawn into the syringe. Okay, so if you can see any bubbles inside the barrel, then you can lightly tap the barrel to expel all the bubbles. Okay, and after that, we're going to remove the aspirating needle and we're going to replace it with the regular needle that comes with the syringe. Okay, and I'm going to throw this on its proper receptacle here in the red receptacle okay and i'm going to attach the regular needle okay and i'm going to set this aside on the hypodermic tray and i'm going to write a medication ticket so that we don't forget the name of the drug the dosage and to whom it is assigned to Okay. Okay. 
So now I'm going to introduce myself to the patient, verify the patient using two identifiers, and I'm going to explain the procedure to the patient. So this is done for us to know if we have the right patient for the right procedure, and also this will lessen the patient's anxiety and it will help us gain patient cooperation. Good day, sir, and Peter and Tika Dubai, your student nurse for today. May I see your wisdom, please? Can you say your name? I am Patrick Anay. For birthday. It's an April 26, 2018. Okay. So, today, sir, we will be doing a penicillin skin test for us to see if you have any allergic reaction for certain medication. Will that be all right with you, sir? Yes, of course. Okay. And also, sir, I would like you to be informed that this medication will produce a small wheel or a blood. But don't worry, sir, this blood will um, subside eventually. And also, you may feel a slight prick when the needle enters your skin. That be alright with you, sir? No problem. Okay, so you, you have any questions or clarifications before you proceed? That's okay. Okay. So now I have closed the doors and curtains for me to provide the patient with privacy. So now we're going to select and cleanse the site. So in selecting the site, basically the intradermal injection is usually done in the patient's forearm. So you can tell if you're in the right site by using the hand method. So hand width above the wrist and three to four fingers below the anticubital space. Okay? And always remember to avoid using sites that are tender, swollen, and have lesions. So I'm going to palpate the patient's forearm. Okay, so sir, do you feel any pain? No. Okay. So now I'm going to apply gloves to protect myself and of course my patient from cross contamination. So now that we have selected the site, we are now going to cleanse the site using a firm circular motion. And now we're going to prepare the syringe for injection by removing the needle cup while waiting for the antiseptic to, to be dry. And if you can see any bubbles inside the barrel, then you can lightly tap the barrel to expel all the bubbles. So now grasp the syringe in the dominant hand, close hub holding it between your thumb and forefinger. Hold the needle almost parallel to the skin surface with the bevel of the needle pointing up. So this is done because the possibility of the medication entering the subcutaneous tissue increases when using an angle greater than 15 degree. So now I'm going to inject the fluid. So with the non-dominant hand, pull the skin at the side until it is stout. This allows for easy entry of the needle and less discomfort for the client. Insert the tip of the needle far enough to place the bevel through the epidermis through the dermis. Stabilize the syringe and needle and inject the medication carefully and slowly so that it produces a small wheel on the skin. So this verifies that the medication entered the dermis. And then quickly withdraw the needle at the same angle at which, at which it was inserted. So activate the needle safety device. And we can apply bandage if indicated. So this is done to minimize patient discomfort and minimize damage to the tissue. And then evaluate the condition of the site. 30 minutes depending on the test. Measure the area of redness and induration in milliliters at the largest diameter. And document findings. Also document if the client had a positive or negative skin test result. Always remember to follow agency protocol on labeling of allergies. 
So now we're going to perform the preparation of medication from an ampule and also for the intramuscular and subcutaneous administration. So this is what an ampule looks like. So I don't have any ampule. So let's just improvise. Okay, so the intramuscular injection is the introduction of solution by means of syringe and needle into the deep muscle tissue where large networks of blood vessels can be found that can um, readily and easily absorb the medication. So first thing we're going to do is to perform proper hand hygiene and observe other appropriate infection prevention procedures to deter the spread of pathogenic microorganisms. Okay, so now prepare the medication ampule for drug withdrawal by flickering the upper stem of the ampule for several times using a fingernail. So imagine that this is, um, just imagine that this is an ampule. Okay, so let's flick the upper stem of the ampule just like this. Okay, so this will bring all the medication to the main portion um, into the ampule. Now use an ampule opener or place a piece of sterile gauze or alcohol wipe between your thumb and the ampule neck or around the ampule neck and break off the top by bending it towards you to ensure that the ampule is broken away from yourself and away from others. So this is done since the sterile gauze protects the finger from the broken glass and any glass fragments will spray away from the nurse or place the antiseptic white pocket over the top of the ampule before breaking off the top. So this method ensures that all glass fragments fall into the pocket and reduces the risk of cuts. Okay, so I'm going to get the gauze pad. Okay, I'm going to place it on the ampule neck. And I'm going to open the ampule by making up the neck. Okay. And then dispose the top of the ampule into its proper receptacle to avoid any injury. Okay. So now we're going to prepare for the withdrawal of medication by placing the ampule on a flat surface and by inserting the needle or the filter needle into a syringe. Okay, so what I have here is a 5cc gauze 23 syringe. Okay, so this is ideal for the intramuscular injection. So I'm going to unpack it. And since it comes with a needle, so I'm going to remove the needle and replace it with aspirating needle. Okay. And I'm going to open the aspirating needle. And I'm going to attach the syringe to it. Okay, and then discard. So now, remove the needle cup and insert the needle to the center of the ampule. So do not touch the rim of the ampule with the needle tip or the needle shaft to maintain the sterility of the needle. And then withdraw the required amount of medication for the dosage. Okay, so with a single dose ampule, hold the ampule on its side and if necessary, to obtain more than the ordered amount of medication. Okay, and after that, I'm going to remove the aspirating needle. 
And I'm going to replace it with the regular needle. I'm going to dispose it in this receptacle. And make sure that the needle is um, firmly attached to the syringe. Okay, and I'm going to place it in the hypodermic tray with the medication ticket for us not to forget what drug it is, the dosage, the route, and to whom it is assigned to. So now I'm going to prepare the patient. I'm going to introduce myself to the patient using two identifiers or using the agency protocol. This is for us to ensure that we have the right patient to the right procedure. Also, this will lessen the patient's anxiety and for us to gain cooperation from the patient. I also have closed the doors and curtains for me to provide privacy to the patient. Good day, sir. I am Kate Lorin Tikanuma, your student nurse for today. May I see your wristband, please? Can you state your name? I am Patrick Anay. Your birthday? It's on April 26, 2002. Okay. Now assist the client to a supine, lateral, prone, or sitting position, or depending on the chosen site. If the target muscle is gluteus medius or ventrogluteal site, have the client in the supine position, flex the knees, in the lateral position, flex the upper leg, and for the prone position, toe in. This is done because appropriate positioning promotes relaxation of the target muscle. So, okay, sir, can you please face into your left side and then slightly flex your leg? Okay, thank you. Also, you can obtain some assistance in holding an uncooperative client to prevent injury due to sudden movement after needle insertion. So now I'm going to explain the purpose of the medication and how it will help using language that the client can understand, include relevant information about the effects of the medication. So this is done since information can facilitate acceptance and compliance with the therapy. Okay, so sir, since your attending physician... Dr. Yang prescribed you with morphine sulfate to alleviate your feeling of pain. So I'm going to inject the medication into your hip. So during the administration, you can experience slight changes into your skin such as redness and itching or swelling on the injection site. So later on, I need you to stay still and refrain from moving. Would that be alright with you, sir? Yes, of course. Okay, so do you have any questions or clarifications before we proceed? No, okay, good. Now select, locate, and clean the site. Select the site that is free from lesions, tenderness, hardness, or localized inflammation, and select the site that is not frequently used. Okay, and then if the injection is to be frequent, alternate the site. Do not use the same site two times in a row. So this is to reduce the discomfort from the intramuscular muscle. Okay, and after that, we're going to locate the exact site and then apply clean gloves to protect myself and of course my patient from cross contamination okay and i'm going to apply clean gloves So now I'm going to clean the site using an antiseptic swab in a firm circular motion starting from the center outward about 5 centimeters. Okay. Okay, and then discard this one. Now, transfer and hold the swab between the third and fourth finger of your non-dominant hand in readiness for needle withdrawal or position the swab on the client's skin above the intended site. So, this will help reduce the discomfort of the injection. Okay. 
Now prepare the syringe for the injection. So we're going to remove the needle cover and discard it without contaminating the needle. Okay, so I'm going to discard this. If using a pre-filled unit dose medication, take caution to avoid gripping medication on the needle prior to injection. If this occurs, wipe the medication off to the needle with a sterile gauze. So this is done since medication left on the needle can cause pain when it is in track through the subcutaneous tissue. Now inject the medication using easy track technique. So now use the ulnar side of the non-dominant hand. To pull the skin approximately 2.5 cm to the side. Under some circumstances, such as for an emaciated client or an infant, the muscle may pinch. Pulling the skin and subcutaneous tissue or pinching the muscle makes it firmer and facilitates needle insertion. And now hold the syringe between your thumb and forefinger as if you are holding a pen. Then pierce the skin quickly and smoothly at a 90 degree angle and insert the needle into the muscle so using a quick motion lessens the client's discomfort and then hold the barrel of the syringe steady with your non-dominant hand and aspirate by pulling back the plunger with your dominant hand aspirate for 5 to 10 seconds So if the needle in, is in the small blood vessel, it takes time for the blood to appear. So if the blood appears in the syringe, withdraw the needle and discard the syringe and prepare a new injection. So these steps determines whether the needle has been inserted into a blood vessel. Alright, so if the blood does not appear, inject the medication steadily and slowly, approximately 10 seconds per ml while holding the syringe steady if, they, if using the ventrogluteal site. So this will promote comfort and allows time for the tissue to expand and begin absorption of the medication. Okay. So after injection, wait until 10 seconds if using the ventrogluteal site. Waiting permits the medication to disperse into the muscle tissue, thus decreasing the client's discomfort. So now we are going to withdraw the needle smoothly at the same angle. It was inserted, so this is to minimize tissue injury and then release the skin. Okay, so now we're going to apply gentle pressure on the side with a dry sponge. So... The use of alcohol swabs may cause pain or a burning sensation. So it is not necessary to massage the injection site since massaging the site will cause leakage of the medication and also it will cause irritation. So if blood occurs, apply gentle pressure using a dry sterile gauze until it stops. And now activate the needle safety device by discarding the uncapped needle and syringe into its proper receptacle. Okay, so this is to prevent needle prick injury. Okay, so now I'm going to position the patient into its comfortable position. Okay, so sir, you can now lay back. Okay. And after that, I'm going to remove my gloves and I'm going to perform proper hand hygiene to deter the spread of pathogenic microorganisms. Okay, and now I'm going to document all of the relevant information including the time of administration, the route, the dosage, and client's reaction. And also, we're going to evaluate the effectiveness of the medication at the time it is expected to act. So now I'm going to perform the subcutaneous administration. Subcutaneous injection is the introduction of solution by means of syringe and needle deep into the adipose tissue. So first and foremost, I'm going to perform proper hand hygiene and observe other Infection prevention procedures to deter the spread of pathogenic microorganisms. After that, I am going to prepare the patient. I'm going to introduce myself to the patient, 
verify the patient using two identifiers or using the agency protocol. So this is for us to ensure that we have the right patient for the right procedure. Okay, and now I have closed the doors and curtains for me to provide the patient with some privacy and away from disturbances. Okay, so good day sir, I am catering Tika Numa, your student nurse for today. Can I see your response please? Can you state your name? I am Patrick Anay. And your birthday? It's on April 26, 2002. Okay. So now, assist the patient in a position where the arms, legs, and abdomen can relax depending on the site to be used. So a relaxed position of the site minimizes discomfort. So the patient is now in a supine position. Okay? And also, you can obtain some assistance in holding an uncooperative patient to prevent injury due to sudden movement after needle insertion. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the procedure or the purpose of the medication and how it can help using the language that the patient can understand, include all of the relevant information about the effects of the medication. So again, information can Facilitate acceptance and compliance of therapy. Okay, so sir, today I'm going to inject an insulin into your lower part of your abdomen. So this is to control your blood sugar level since you have a type 1 diabetes. And during the administration of the medication, you can feel a slight changes into your skin like redness or swelling in the injection site. And later, during the, during the administration, I need you to stay still and refrain from moving. Would that be alright with you, sir? Yes, it's alright. Okay, so do you have any questions or clarifications? No, 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 no. Okay. So now, select, locate, and clean the site. Select the site free from tenderness, hardness, swelling, scarring, itching, burning, or localized inflammation. Select a site that has not been frequently used. Since these conditions could hinder the absorption of the medication and may also increase the likelihood of injury and discomfort at the injection site. So now I'm going to apply clean gloves to protect myself and of course my patient from cross contamination. Okay, so now sir, can you lift your hands please? So now, as agency protocol indicates, clean the site with an antiseptic swab, start at the center of the site and clean in a widening circle about 5 cm and allow the area to dry thoroughly. So the mechanical action of swabbing removes skin secretions which contains microorganisms. Then place and hold the swab between the third and fourth fingers of the non-dominant hand or position the swab on the client's skin above the intended site. Now we are going to prepare the syringe for the injection by removing the needle cup. While waiting for the antiseptic to dry, pulse the cup straight off to avoid contaminating the needle by the outside edge of the cup. Now, inject the medication by grasping the syringe in your dominant hand by holding it between your thumb and fingers with palm facing to the side or upward for 45 degree angle insertion or with palm downward for a 90 degree angle insertion and prepare to inject. Using the non-dominant hand, pinch or spread the skin at the side and insert the needle using the dominant hand in a firm steady push. So when the needle is inserted, move your non-dominant hand to the end of the plunger. So some nurses find it easier to move the non-dominant hand to the barrel of the syringe and the dominant hand at the end of the plunger. Now inject the medication by holding the syringe steady and depressing the plunger with a slow, even pressure. So this will minimize discomfort for the client.
So now remove the needle smoothly pulling along the line of insertion while depressing the skin with your non-dominant hand. So this will minimize the client's discomfort when the needle is withdrawn. So if bleeding occurs, apply pressure to the site with dry sterile gauze until it stops. Now dispose the supplies appropriately by activating the needle safety device or discard the uncapped needle and attach syringe into its designated receptacle so this will reduce the risk of injury. After that, I am going to assist the patient into a comfortable position, flip down the medication ticket if not using medication administration record. Okay, so I'm going to cover you up now, sir. After that, I'm going to do the aftercare of the equipment and remove gloves and perform proper hand hygiene to deter the spread of pathogenic microorganisms. After that, document all the relevant information such as the medication given, dosage, the route, and any assessment. Also, assess the effectiveness of the medication at the time it is expected to act and document it. So, that's it for my return demonstration. I am Kate Lurie Thank you for watching.